Hello and welcome again to my channel. Uh, this is a third video that we're going to be doing in a series of building the uh, a, a sock in a box based off of the Kali Purple uh, distribution of Kali Linux. Uh, if you are liking the information and the content that I'm actually putting out, please feel free to hit the like button and the subscribe button so you'll be uh, notified of when I, and the notify uh, just so you'll be uh, able to be notified for whenever I put out new content. Uh, as a reminder, this is video three in this series. Uh, we will be building the OpenSense firewall, that is the protect node, if you will, the uh, the boundary of this SOC that's going to be deployed, the Security Operations Center, Virtual Security Operations Center, that'll be deployed. Uh, I'm going to switch here as a reminder to show you. This is the diagram that was put out with the previous documentation uh, from Offensive Security, the folks behind Kali Purple. Uh, these four nodes here in the middle, Byzantium, Fire, Kali, Violet, Kali Purple, and Kali, Kali Eminence, I will be building Byzantium, the OpenSense firewall, in this video. Uh, I'll have links for any any uh, references that I mention. Uh, there'll be links in the description below uh, to reference those. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to go ahead and do is switch over to my virtual environment. And we're going to log into my vSphere uh, box here. Let's see here. And so, also something else that I will actually do, I will pull up my documentation that I actually put together for this particular project. Uh, so, let's see here. I'm going to go to my table of contents. And what we are doing today is going to be building the uh, uh, protect node. I'll show you here. Uh, this the link to this is actually in the description, as mentioned before. Uh, under this section six here, this is going to be. Uh, we'll look at 6.1. This uh, di this section here will go through the details of how we're actually going to build this um, this virtual machine. So just if I go ahead and review this, uh, we'll have, uh, in a nutshell, what we're going to have are is a virtual machine with four interfaces. I'll have one connected to a WAN, one connected to a LAN, one connected to a DMZ, and one connected to a, a separate enclave a network for the SOC uh, analyst workstations. As a matter of fact, I believe I have a diagram up that, should, that shows that depiction here. Yes, this one right here. So actually, this is not the exact one. It would be this one, I believe. Yes, this is the one. So our firewall is going to have a connection to a WAN. It's going to have a connection to a LAN. It's going to have a connection to the, uh, well, excuse me, this is DMZ. This would be the LAN interface. We'll just call it management. And this is the uh, SOC analyst workstation. I call it OpNet. Um, one of the things that I actually can show you ahead of time here in my environment, if I look at my networking in vSphere, clicking on networking, I already have a lot of different um, uh, virtual networks already created. Uh, and the networks that we will actually be using here, we will be using this SOC WAN, or actually this is not going to be the one that I'm actually doing. My WAN uh, connection. I'll be using this uh, internet gateway as the WAN connection. That that will give me internet access. Uh, I will have. Let's see here. SOC management. That will be my uh, management interface. SOC DMZ and SOC OpNet. Those. So these three and this gateway here. Those will be my four networks that I uh, connect this to. So going back to this. Let's take a look and see what we're actually um, configuring. We're going to call this, I'm going to name it as, actually, I'm. Well, let me see what I actually have already, because I do have a couple virtual machines built. Identify, detect. Okay, so we will go right off of what this is actually stating here. So the virtual machine will be named Byzantium. I'm going to make it a ESXi 6.7, Linux, Debian Linux. Uh, we'll give it a, and these are the details here. Um, and wherever wherever I thought possible, I went ahead and 
basically use the exact same values that are called for from the uh, offensive security version of the uh, Kali, uh, the, so the Kali Sock in the Box uh, deployment guide. So with this node, it has two, two CPUs, two gigs of RAM, 128 gig drive, and then our four, um, our four networks. Although, like I said, I'm going to use a separate network here for the, um, for the internet. And I will attach the uh, ISO. So this is all I wanted to take a look here is what are the details. So two CPUs, two gigs of RAM, 128 gig drive. Let's go ahead and get that going. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and create a new uh, machine. Go ahead and make sure I select it. We'll give it a name. Byzantium. Again, we're going to make sure this is Linux. I would just, in my instructions, I just tell you, um, if you're using vSphere, regardless of what version, use the highest level of, uh, of Debian that you have available to you and make sure you choose the 64-bit version. And I've only got one data store, so that's fine as far as where it's going to, where the, de the files are going to live. So, um, first thing we're going to do is give it two CPUs, two gigs of RAM already there. We'll change this to 128 gigs of, dry, of hard drive space. One thing I will highlight in the instructions, I'll do that here, is to make sure this is thin provision, unless you just really got a lot of space like that. And let's see here. USB, I'm not going to use it, but I'll just change it to three, uh, just for the heck of, just for kicks. And this is where my first interface, I will make sure it's the internet gateway. And then what I'll do is I can go ahead and add the others here now. So now we're going to go, my second interface is the, so I have a SOC LAN and a SOC management. Uh, I have to make sure I know which one I was using. Really, it doesn't matter. Uh, both of these are the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the LAN as long as all the other nodes are connected to that same one, SOC LAN. Um, I don't have to change anything else here. I'll add another network adapter. And as a matter of fact, I'll just do two. So now this one is going to be my DMZ. And this one is going to, well, actually, no. It doesn't really matter again the order i'm just picky so this is going to be my uh, opnet and then this will be my dmz excuse me opnet here dmz here nope that's not that this dmz the big thing is you notice all these are showing up with a default uh zeros across for the mac address i'm going to show you what i'm going to do in a little bit here so now i choose the iso I have my ISOs in this folder, and this is going to be OpenSense. We'll so use OpenSense 23.7 that I have in here, and I'll make sure that this says connect and connect on power on. Sometimes you have to actually manually select set that before you start it. Otherwise, it will not. When you start the virtual machine, it will boot up as if there is no disk in the drive, and that's really it on this. I can go ahead and hit next. It says opnet is not supported. So let's see here. Actually, I know why these are not supported. So what I'm going to do is remove all but the internet gateway. This is due to I'm I'm in the vSphere uh, interface, not vCenter. Um, I can go into vCenter later and I'll show you how I can add those others because those other uh, virtual uh, networks are actually distributed uh, port groups. Uh, they are managed by vCenter. So vSphere, you can't uh, attach directly through that. So again, I have this. This one is a local, um, not a, a standard port group and not a um, and not a distributed one. So that allow, it should allow me to do that just fine. And next, it's just having us verify and now I hit finish. And now I have my firewall here. And because of what I wanted to do, I want to make sure I'm going to go into my, um, this is my vCenter uh, interface. And now more than likely that machine is going to show up under discovered virtual machine. There it is. I'm going to move it into this Kali purple folder. 
this is this does not have any bearing on what is seen in the vSphere um, interface. But what I am going to do, since now I'm in vCenter, I'm going to go ahead and edit the settings, and I'm going to add those other networks that I wanted to add. Let's see here. I want to verify that it still says that. Uh, and also one thing now this is this has generated a MAC address um, so we're going to add the network adapter and again the next one I'm going to add here is my management I will use this let's just go ahead and type in sock for a filter so I'm going to go ahead and add my sock management sock LAN was an actual standard port group so I could have used it Okay. Sock management. Next one is going to be the sock opnet. And the final one will be the sock DMZ. And then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now what I'm going to do before I fire this bad boy up, I'm going to go ahead and hit Edit Settings again. And this time I'm going to expand all of these. Because now they all have MAC addresses. And it's key to know what MAC addresses, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to use this notepad here as just a little scratch pad. So, it is key to know, and I'm going to put this off screen. All I'm going to do is identify each network. So my first one is going to be Internet or the WAN. I should just say that. And then I'll take this guy and copy it over. And I'll show you what I've got after I've done all this. LAN. And this is going to come in, uh, this is going to be detrimental when it comes to once you get to the point of after you've installed the OS, you will need to, in the text mode of uh, setup, what it's going to do is ask you to identify your interfaces. Which one is your internet connection? Which one is your LAN connection? Those are the two that really matter, but um, later on you will need to know all of them so you know which ones are, which interfaces are which. And therefore, that allows you to be able to set your firewall rules and things up properly. Actually, let me get this opnet first. And then we have the DMZ. Okay, so this is what I recorded. I just basically said each of these interfaces, and now I know which MAC addresses they are. So I'll put that off to the side. I can cancel here, and now I can go ahead and start this guy up. And in the vCenter, I like using the vCenter interface over the vSphere interface. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the vSphere, um, in here, if I wanted to actually look at the interface, I have a limited window size and whatnot. Um, this is basically my console. I like using vCenter because I can at least use a full screen. Yes, I know there's an existing connection. That's fine. And I will make sure that I have my instructions here off to the side as well so I can follow those. Actually, those aren't mine. Those are the original, but I have mine as well. So now let's get back to this guy. And just for kicks, I'll go full screen. Okay, so 
when it gets to this screen here, as you can see, actually I will escape the uh, full screen just for a second. So you can see my, well, you can't see my mouse, but um, right here, it shows that it detects that the LAN and the WAN are these two. And it already has an IP address of uh, 170, it's got an IP address that's been assigned to the WAN, 172.16 DHCP. And the LAN, it just automatically gave 192.168.1.1. Uh, the fact that it's got a DHCP address lets me know that, yes, it detected the correct uh, network for the, the, for the uh, wide area network. Because Excuse me, my microphone went out again. Um, so it detected the right uh, network because I do have DHCP present, a DHCP server present on my uh, Internet Gateway network. So, at this point, we're going to log in. To install the OS, the login for OpenSense is actually installer. And the password should be OPN Sense. Now to bring us here. So, um, we'll go ahead and continue with the default key map here. And what we want to do is just do the install, the basic one, U UFS. So, we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And this will, I, more than likely, this will identify your disk, your hard disk as DA0. And this is the disk that we want to use. The 128 gig disk. The other one is your CD-ROM. So we'll go ahead and click with that. Do you want to continue with the recommended swap partition? I would say yes. And last chance, if you want to change anything, we're not going to change. We just go ahead and select yes and hit enter. And now it's going to do our installation. And I'm going to cruise through the uh, things to see what else is next. So the next piece that we will actually see is pretty much the completion of the install. You'll be able to set your root password before you tell it to exit and reboot. Uh, you actually could complete and reboot if you want to, but it's probably best to do set the password first to a secure password that you are aware of or that you, you would remember. And this is what you would use to log into the uh, firewall. For those who are you are just looking at this uh, video, just to kind of see how we're walking through this, if you are still using a Proxmox um, uh, environment, other than the building, and this is going to be key for everything, every other node that we build here, build in this series, outside of building the actual VM in the hypervisor, all the rest of these uh, steps can be followed by. Uh, anyone regardless of hypervisor if you're using VMware workstation if you're using Hi Proxmox uh, Quemu whatever you build the VMs using the specs that are provided or that are recommended in whatever fashion is required for you in your hypervisor once you power that machine on it's all the same steps uh, one thing I will say while we're waiting for this uh, installation to complete the Proxmox instructions, the original instructions, does not indicate that you need a workstation, uh, a separate workstation, be it a physical machine or a virtual machine, that has access to the local area network side of your of this firewall. Because once we finish with this text ver version here, this text uh, sex, uh, text mode of setup. Everything else needs to be done via the web, via the web interface of the firewall. So when it reboots, um, you'll need to have a virtual, I would recommend a virtual machine, but a virtual machine or a physical machine that can actually communicate with the LAN interface at 192.168.1.1. They don't call that out in their instructions. I made sure to bring that up. So. That's just a little nugget there. And anywhere else where I remember there were some changes or different things that I needed to do or some things I had to figure out, I will provide those nuggets to you as we come across those. But yes, make sure you have a VM. As a matter of fact, while this is doing this, I'm going to double check and make sure I do have a virtual machine that is available. Maybe I have one under testing. I believe I have a Kali machine. 
I have one. I just don't know if I remember the password on it. We shall see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this guy up. I'll also make sure once it starts, I'll also make sure it's connected to that. Uh, so this is on the opnet. Yeah, this is the one I would use. I'm going to set it up on uh, the management network. And we'll also bring this guy up. I'll just move this over here. Yep, I remember that. All right, I was doing something here. But anyway, what we can do is make sure um, that this guy's network connection is on the same subnet as well. So we're going to make sure IP. Man. So yeah, we'll change this guy to 1.10. And it's gateway is 1.1. One one. And I'll use DNS as well for 1.1. One one. Save. All right. And And of course, it's not going to do anything yet because that box is still being uh, built. So we'll come back to that. And right now we will wait. Again, it's going to, uh, it should be, it's just about done installing the actual image. And then after that, we'll set our password to a secure password for the root account. And then we will just go ahead and tell it to exit and reboot. And we'll see a reboot. And after that, we basically have to go on to another machine. In this case, that other Kali machine I just showed you. And browse, navigate to the uh, LAN interface so that we can log in with the credentials you just created. It'll be root and the password that you provide. We still get an unreachable here. It probably won't reach it until after the, um, either A, the image is done, or B, right after I reboot. I want to double check something too. I want to see what box this, what, what, which of my hosts this is actually on. Oh, it's on the same host, so it should have no issues. Because I have two hosts that are connected to each other. All right, so here we can actually go ahead and set the password. And we'll reset it again. All right, root password has changed, and now we just uh, reboot. Complete install. I'm just going to go ahead and let it do it. And actually, while we're here, let's see if we're getting anything. Actually, what I will do with this guy. Enable networking. We will disable networking. And we will enable it as well. Just kind of a reset there, too. And now for those who have seen a, um, a BSD variant of an OS reboot, this is going to look very familiar. <laughs> if you've worked with PFSense, this is going to look very familiar. And obviously for those who have worked with OpenSense. All right, so we have a reboot done. Let me make sure I have some connectivity here because I will not be able to get further on that without this. And I want to make sure, edit settings, 
we are on sock management for network adapter one cancel that and then I want to look up here on this guy well actually I see what's going what may be going on so let's get back on here first we're not logging into the web just yet we're gonna log in here with the password So now, first thing we're going to do is assign interfaces. When, uh, as far as configuring lags, we're not going to do that. We do not want to configure any VLANs. Now, this is where you need to know what those IP addresses, are, or excuse me, the MAC addresses are. So now, according to, with my uh, previous here, as we can see, my, it's going to ask me what my WAN interface is first, so I know that's the one that ends in 3556. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I choose, it appears to be VMX1, which that one it already knew. That's the one it's got the IP address for the from uh, my DHCP server. So that's fine. The LAN one, that's the interesting one. This is the one that's going to be having the firewall netting set up by default. So in my case, it is 5598. So now let's go ahead and put, because now that's the interface, the actual virtual interface that is connected to that network. So before they may have had a different one assigned. So I'm gonna go ahead and do VMX2, because that appears to be my 5598, that is correct. And then optional one and two, these really can be in any order. I'm gonna go ahead and do them in the order I connected them. So I had an opnet next, which was Bravo 7 Echo Echo. So that would be VMX3. And then optional two, uh, which these will be labeled as opt one, opt two. You can change the names once we get into the web interface. This is the only one that's left and that's VMX0. I've had times also where I've built firewalls, whether it's PFSense or OpenSense, where I would literally just put two um, interfaces. As a matter of fact, yeah, I would put really only one interface, boot it up, let it find the DHCP, and then I would shut it down, add the LAN, boot it up, let it uh, configure that as a LAN interface, and then the other two I just do in order. Then it go. Then it. That's for those who are OCD and want them to be VMX zero. That's my interface net. VMX one. That's my LAN. VMX two. I want that to be option one, and so on and so forth. Uh, we do not have an option three, so we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Are these? We're just verifying. Yes, we want that. And now it's restarting some services. It's uh, making sure that the uh, the the interfaces are allocated properly and now this is interesting because now I can see that op2 was the one that they had at first so in this setup what I can do I'm not going to do anything I'm going to go to my collie box and see if I'm getting anything I wasn't even pinging I'm still not seeing this but this may be due to the fact that the firewall appears to have this same IP assigned to both. But what we're going to do, if I go back to this diagram, I want to see here. Actually, I don't need this diagram. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to come back to this diagram. I'm going to go ahead and set the IP addresses for those other two interfaces. So my management actually that's what I'm gonna do my management is gonna be 220.1 I'll go ahead and set that now and then opnet is gonna be 200.1 and DMZ is 10 20 30 189 so we'll go ahead and set those right now this is optional you do want to make sure your your management and your WAN interfaces are configured properly before you move on to the web interface so let's go ahead and let's set uh, management 200.1 220.1 excuse me so now option two or selection two here I could do set interface IP and I'm going to go ahead and do the LAN which is one IP do I want to configure via DHCP that is a negative I want to go ahead and add an IP 192.168.220.1 and I believe you can go ahead and slash 24 that 
and it recognizes the nope it does not like the uh it doesn't like the the cider notation so you just put the ip address in there and then it asks you uh for the bit map bit uh, subnet mass length 24. in pf sense it'll allow you to do this see you can do it either or uh for LAN, do i have a gateway for lands no so i'll just hit enter for no gateway i'm not going to configure ipv6 via wan tracking do i, I don't want a dhcp and i don't even want an address so i'm just going to hit enter do you want to enable dhcp server on the LAN? yes i do actually i want to go ahead and give this uh the start 192.168 dot 220 dot we'll go 100 and 192.168.220.110 dot dot because there's not going to be too many things that are going to be using this I only want this just for setup I'll disable it later don't want to change the web GUI protocol from HTTPS to HTTP that I do not want to do I want to keep it on HTTPS you want to generate a new self-signed certificate, GUI certificate? That is, a, yes, you want to do this. And you want to restore the defaults? Yes. Not sure if this really does anything, but I, the way my setup was done, I did yes on both of these. So now I have 220.1. And now what I'm going to do is go back to my Kali box. And I'm going to just, I'm going to control C this here. I'm going to disable networking here and I'm going to edit the connection this time I'm just going to put it on DHCP and we'll know if everything's working if it grabs an IP address so we'll go ahead and set this guy to automatic DHCP we'll just delete that I don't even need this save okay and now we will enable networking and for uh just to make sure, we'll go ahead and restart Network Manager too. And now we've got an IP address. So 192.168.220.100. And now we should be able to go into a browser. In this case, I'm going to use Firefox on this machine. Go ahead and maximize that. We'll go HTTPS 220.1. And we have now we got connectivity. So potential risk. We'll go ahead and uh, advanced and we'll accept it. And now we log in with those same credentials. I'm going to go ahead and save them on this box. And now this is our, we're in our OpenSense configuration, uh, the web interface. So I'm going to go ahead on my instructions. Um, I'm going to pull open that section there for the web. And the first thing we're going to do is going to, it's going to bring us into our wizard as we see here. We're just going to go ahead and hit next. And this is where we're going to go ahead and give it its name, Byzantium, and we will use the same domain that is actually used in the instructions. So um, in this case, it's going to be Kali.purple. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I will, whatever you do with your domain name for your enclave, just be consistent. So every node that you build, every time you have to put an FQD and a fully qualified domain name, just make sure it's the same domain name. I'm not going to do Kali.purple because it gets kind of confusing because one of the actual names of the systems, the specifically the detect node, is Kali-purple. So Kali-purple, dot Kali.purple. That just seems kind of weird. So I'm going to, my mind that I'm going to use, my environment is called CDX. I make it for a cyber domain, uh, cyber defense exercise. So I just call it CDX. So I'm going to call it cdx.lab or uh, .ftss. And ftss, I call it, you might have seen on some of the diagrams like this guy here, 
you see something that references Falcon Trident. Uh, I'm calling, I'm just naming this enclave a Falcon Trident, call it a weapon system, a cyber weapon system. Um, so that's just my own name for it. So FTSS, Falcon Trident Support System, that's what I'm going to use. FTSS is my domain. Keeping the language as English, and then DNS servers. There are two DNS servers that are recommended by the Kali um, purple folks, the folks behind the instructions. They are, I believe, open DNS. I'm not sure they, they're, uh, but I, I've, I've used them before. They work just fine. So you can really use any working DNA, internet DNS servers you want here. Uh, these are 84.200.69.80 and 84.200.70.40. And we're going to leave this checked for override DNS. We're going to leave the resolver checked. We're going to enable DNS sec secure uh, support. And then we'll go ahead and hit next. At this point, we're going to go ahead and leave these here. You can actually set the time zone to whatever you will you want. I'm going to leave mine at uh, UTC. Next up, this is the WAN interface configuration. Currently, it's set at DHCP. I'm going to leave it there. Not going to really make any changes here. So scrolling down to the bottom, go ahead and hit next. And then your LAN interface should be next. I'm leaving mine. This is going to be, and I want to double check this is that this is the IP that I was using in this diagram. It is 220.1. So that's going to be my uh, that LAN. Subdomain mass 24. This basically taking the the de the information the configuration that we set in the text based setup. Root password. We're not going to change this because we've already set our password. This is if you just wanted if you set a temporary one and you want to set a permanent one there, and then we just go ahead and hit reload. All right, and if we go to our dashboard, we should be able to see a little bit of of these uh, items here. So we see the LAN interface here, we see the OPT1, we see the OPT2, and we see the WAN interface. Um, so the next step that we're going to do here is interface assignments. Actually, we don't really even need to do this because we did this on the tech side. But just to show you, we can go over here on the right, on the left side. We click on interfaces and then we can click on assignments and actually we can do something here. So this is where if we hadn't done it during the text mode, we could actually configure the appropriate uh, interfaces with the respective LAN. What we can do here, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'll click on the name and let's see here. I believe I thought, ah, description. So here, I can actually put the name of what I want it to be called. So I'm just going to do, this is SOC Management. And we'll go ahead and hit Save. And as you notice here, it's changed from LAN to SOC Management. So I'm going to go ahead and name all the rest of these. SOC WAN, option one, opti opti optional interface one. This is the one that we said was going to be the opnet. So we're going to go ahead and SOC opnet. And opti optional interface two is DMZ. And actually, I should have while I was in those. Let's see. The management one is done. Opnet, I want to do. If I go back to this diagram, 
my opnet di uh, interface should be 200.1 and my DMZ it to be 1020.30.189. This is opnet. So we're going to go ahead and choose IPv4 configuration type. It's going to be static. And we're not going to do anything for IPv6. Nothing for Mac. And since I put IPv4 here, now I can enter 192.168. Which one is this opnet? 200.1 with a 24 bit mask length. No, don't need to do anything here. And hit save. So now we actually have that IP address here. And then for management, this guy, static IPv4 already, oh, not management, excuse me, DMZ. IPv4, I believe it was 10.20.30.189 slash 24. Save. So now that we have all of those, if I go back to the dashboard, if I go to our lobby and then dashboard. We may have to refresh this. Let me double check opnet. Okay, so it does have its IP there. Um, that's all that really matters here for the moment. So now that we've done the renaming of the interfaces and configuration, uh, now let's do some other uh, further uh, configuration. So now we're going to go system, I believe it's here, system here, settings, and administration. On this page, we're verifying this is HTTPS that, that we're using. We're going to keep that. For our TCP port, we're going to change this to 8443. And then secure shell, we want that enabled. Everything else should be good. We'll hit save on this page. And now it's not going to necessarily re redirect us. We'll have to click on this link because now we're using a different port. Now this next part here, we're going to be doing setting proxy settings. So under services, we're going to collapse this. We'll go to uh, navigate to services, web proxy, and administration. And on under forward proxy, we're not going to do anything under general proxy. I'm going to disregard that right now. Under forward proxy. I want to use my LAN interface, so that is the SOC management. This will be port 80. We will check the box for enable uh, transparent HTTP proxy. We'll change our SSL to 443. And then we'll go ahead and hit apply. Let's make sure that hit. There we go. Next thing we're going to do is enabling syslog. So now we're still under, we go back to system. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to logging targets. Under here, we're going to have an alias. We're going to create a new alias. So that's going to be this plus sign over here. Actually, hold on just one second. I 
think I missed a part, at least in my instructions. So what I will do is I will uh, consult this uh, document here. This is under installation. We're going to search for the, the logging. We've already done the configuration of the LAN interface. We have the proxy. Actually, for this one, Elastic Agent Speeds. I'm going to double check these. This is all after the detect mode. Here we go. So I took this piece. So basically, we're creating a uh, UDP port trans UDP four uh, transport for uh, Kali Purple in our case dot CDX dot FTSS, and it's just going to be going to uh, syslog to Elasticsearch. This is act that's what I was looking for here. So. They don't go into details as to what all to select here, but I did. I'm gonna bring this back over right quick. This section right here. These are all the things we're gonna actually select. Actually, what I will do is give me a, uh, a separate screen over here so I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth. So, get back to my configuration here, and what we'll do is get back to so UDP4, and what is selected? We're going to select Audit, Config D, DCP D. You really could select everything here if you wanted to. I just had certain ones connected: Filter, Firewalls, Gateway. IPsec, and then we have NTP, NTPD, NTP date, OpenVPN, Resolver, Squid, and Suricata. Okay. And as far as far as the others levels it says nothing selected nothing selected the host name is going to be key host name and the port we are going to use 9001 not the default 514 and the host name we're going to use kali dash purple dot and in my case cdx dot ftss this will know because later on we're going to configure actual d resolver names so column dns entries within the firewall so that it knows how to translate this and this is syslog to elastic search we'll go ahead and save that so now this guy is already configured to start sending syslog data to Elasticsearch. Right now, there's nothing receiving it. So it's just blindly sending it out. But once we get that uh, detect node up, it will automatically start receiving this data. So now we're going to actually do some updating of OpenSense. So first thing we're going to do here, we're going to go right back to the lobby to the dashboard. And right here. We have a button here that says click to check for updates. It'll give us, it may give us a little message. It's doing a check first. And there will be updates. With this 23.7, there's guaranteed to be updates. After a few seconds, we will have a screen that just pops up showing you all the uh, latest patch notes. There it is. Actually, they have a new version, 24.1. So we'll hit close. We're going to scroll right here. We're going to just scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen. 
once we get down to the bottom, we'll have a button here that says update. This firewall will reboot directly after this firmware update. So yes, this will be doing our install here. While it's doing that, I'm going to take a look, kind of see what's next. So we have this, this is where we are. And then when it reboots and we log back in, we can try the same thing again. If everything went well, we should see this green box pop up that says, or green title box, it says firmware that there's no updates. After this, what we're gonna be doing is install VM tools. This is so that the hypervisor can have better um, connectivity and better um, uh, inter interactivity with the actual virtual machine and its OS specifically. Uh, so we'll be doing the, the VM tools. This is the open version, open source version. And we'll reboot the uh, firewall after that as well. And then unbound DNS, this is where we will create those entries for all of our nodes. And as you see, I have a little table here for those. I have Kali.purple, I'm gonna replace that with cdx.ftss. But we will, and also these IP addresses I'll be changing. Um, to 220 just because that's what I'm currently using right now as a matter of fact I'm not going to use 220 I'm going to go ahead and once this thing reboots I'm going to change this back to 30 because I know at some point down the line I'm going to probably be reading this instruction these instructions that I wrote and put 30 and wonder why things aren't working so I'm going to go ahead and switch my LAN interface from the 192.168.220 to 192.168.30. Don't really have to do any other changes anywhere else. Um, I believe the DHCP server should go ahead and pick up on that and change its scopes. Um, in, uh, I'll just have to, on this workstation that I'm on, this, this Kali machine, or actually not that, this Kali machine, I'll have to re-grab an IP address just to make sure I'm on the right network. Other than that, everything else should go kosher. This will take a little bit, so uh, bear with me. But yes, uh, I, if once it's done, I'll go ahead and uh, move on to the next pieces. Again, we're going to be installing OpenVM tools once it's ready. Reboot. And actually, when it reboots, the first thing I will be doing is the IP change. So now it's already downloaded everything. Now it's going to be doing the installs. And we'll get into firewall aliases after we're doing the, the, uh, the DNS entries. These firewall aliases make it easier for us to be able to set up rules on the interfaces. There's quite a few. I have, like I said, I have in my documentation, I have a list of all the things that you'll want to actually set up. This is, I organized it this way in the, in the others. If we take a look at the, um, in here, these are the portions that are in, let's say, for example, the other nodes, their first few steps. When they're saying configure the firewall, it'll tell you, hey, creative, they were doing the micro segmentation, so that's where they editing VLAN, whatnot, creating virtual IPs for the firewall. But they also have you creating um, rules and um, any aliases that are required for that node at the beginning of each one of them. So all of those steps for each of these nodes, you identify the detect and respond node, they are all consolidated into this uh, protect portion in my documentation here. So once we're done with this, we should not have to come back to the firewall at all. Let's check on our firewall. It's moving right along, doing the installations and upgrades. I will let this run and I will be right back.
back for the moment and as we see we're still uh, installing and updating While this is doing this, one of the things I did note is that, as we can see on this screen right now, we see Squid, we also saw Suricata up there. We have instructions provided by, another. this is something else I noticed that was kind of odd or missing. The instructions provided by Office of Security, or the folks who actually authored those, um, they don't mention Squid configuration, they don't mention Suricata configuration. They do mention in the diagram, in that original diagram, that they're that both are present on the firewall. But they don't mention any configuration of them. As a matter of fact, Suricata, there's no configuration of Suricata at all, whether it's on here or on the actual respond node. Now, to be fair, my instructions don't have any configuration of either I, for either of these uh, titles either. However, I will be working on at least for Suricata on the um, the respond node and on network sensors. If, if you so choose to deploy those, I will talk about configuring those. I don't have anything written yet, but that I at least have some familiarity with, so I will be going ahead and do those. Looks like it's just about done with the update, and it'll be doing a reboot. As a matter of fact, on the firewall itself, we'll see it reboot from this screen. The other screen will tell you, hey, it is rebooting, and it'll have some countdowns and whatnot. And if it expires before it's reboot, it'll just refresh the countdown a little bit. But we can see from this, from basically the terminal of the firewall, the console, excuse me, this is where we'll be able to see whether the when the firewall is uh, reboot is complete. Also, since I did say I was going to change the firewall IP address, matter of fact, while we're talking about that, I'm going to update my map. Make sure I change that now so that my reference is correct. So, since we already, 
set the firewall IP address on this screen from this uh, console here before and the DHCP scope and whatnot. When I do change the IP address, I will actually do it from the GUI, from the uh, web interface, so you can see kind of how that's done. Let's see what our web GUI is saying right now. Still fetching base image. It's doing cleanup. So after this phase, it should do the firewall reboot. Yep, here we go. As you can see right there, root at byzantium.cdx.ftss, so the, at least the host name configurations have changed and have taken effect. And there's all of our IP addresses, as you can see there. And we'll go back to here. It's on our login screen. I should have saved it, it doesn't matter. Uh, so what we're going to do before we go back in and check again, I want to go ahead and change the interfaces management interface. I'm going to go ahead and set this guy to 30. And apply changes. And now up here, I'll go ahead and that. Actually, I'll just take everything off the end of this and also change that back to 30. And if it doesn't allow me to go right away, one way I can find out is logging in here.
So it took. I just need to. What I'll probably do is just uh, close Firefox completely. Open it back up. Oh, I might want to disable my networking and enable my networking so that I can get an IP address. Let's see if that works because sometimes it takes the reboot of uh, the network manager. Yeah, let's restart network manager. So what we might have to do here is do it from here just so that it can take care of the DHCP as well. Interface that we're doing is two. Nope. Okay, so it's keeping the 8443. I did have to redo the web certificate because it was bound to that previous IP address. Oh, and we've got an IP already. There you go. So now we can come up here. Now we're back in. Now we're on. Now we can go back to here and verify that there are no updates. There actually may be. Nope, it says packages are up to date. There it is. So now what we're going to do is install the VMware tools. So system on the system firmware screen, we're going to go to the plugins tab. I'll just type VM and you can see OS VMware. We're going to click on this plus sign to go ahead and get that installed. And actually, before that installs, one of the things you'll see here, you notice you don't see any DNS name, you don't see IP address and nothing like that. It cannot read that information because there are no, it doesn't have any tool sets installed in the, in the uh, guest OS to that recognize that, that, uh, that that can communicate with the vSphere API. So what we're doing now is installing the, that kit. And as a matter of fact, now that it has, I don't need to do this, look at this. Now, I, and as you can see up here, it says VMware tools is not installed on this virtual machine. Now I should be able to do a refresh. Actually, no, I think it takes a restart. Yes. Power reboot. So yes, I will need to go ahead and do a reboot. Reboot. Yes. It's rebooting. And when it comes up, we'll see the FQDN and IP addresses and that kind of thing.
once we verify that the VMware tools, the OpenVM tools is running property, the next thing we'll be doing is configuring unbound DNS. This is what we'll be adding our DNS entries for our local hosts, specifically talking about our detect, respond, and uh, identify nodes, as well as for the firewall. Okay, so this guy's rebooted, and now that line goes away about no tools. I can refresh here, and we'll probably see. Oh, right here, we can at least see it's the tools are running. Before, it didn't show any tools. So let's get back to this guy, log back in. Now we'll go to Unbound DNS. We're going to go to Services, Unbound DNS, and Overrides. Oh, that's Open DNS, sorry. Unbound, that's the one I want. Overrides. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start by hitting this plus sign here. And we'll start with our detect node. So I will go Kali purple. The domain is going to be cdx.ftss. Again, this will match whatever domain you decided to use. It is an IPv4. This is an A record, basically. And we will go 192.168.30.5. And as far as the description, you just get, I'll just call mine detect node. This is our SIM, or will be our SIM. And as you can see, we've got that entry. So now, from my from this box here if I were to try to ping Kali dash purple CDX dot FTSS I'll get no response but it's at least let's see name or service unknown actually I don't have my I, I'm sure I don't even have a uh, let's see here sudo cat slash at C slash resolve I am. Okay. Kali dash purple. Okay. So let's get back to setting these up right quick. So I'm going to make a couple more. FTSS Violet is dot seven. And actually what I'll do, I'll just cop I'll just clone it. Make it easier. Eminence and this one should be dot three. And this is respond. And I guess I'll go ahead and throw one in here for myself. Actually cancel. I'll just do Byzantium. All right, this is why I w it wasn't working. This is why I was not working, because I had not hit apply. So now, now as you can see, it's trying to reach out to that IP. It's resolving. It's not 
it's not getting any responses because it hasn't been built yet. But at least we see that part's working. Actually, I will go full screen here. So we've created our our uh, DNS entries, override entries. Now let's go to firewall aliases. And actually, I will come back out of full screen because with firewall aliases, this is what we're going to be creating. All these aliases here. And they're particularly for ports, port groupings. So getting back to our firewall, we're going to go ahead and go to firewall and aliases. And there's already some that are built in. We'll go ahead and hit new. We're going to call this one ports underscore elastic. I don't believe this actually uh, likes spaces, so you probably have to use the underscore. Uh, and these are going to be ports, not hosts. Categories, I leave that blank. Content. This is where we just start typing in port numbers. 5601. And hit enter. That, I believe, is Elasticsearch. No, that's Kibana's port. Web port. 9200, that's Elasticsearch. 8220, that one I believe is Fleet Server. That's going to be important when it comes to having agents uh, report back to your <laughs> SIM. 9300, I believe that's another, uh, that's probably a log stash port. 9001, I don't recall which one that is off the top of my head. 5044, that's definitely the log stash. So 5601, 9200, 8220, 9300, 9001, 5044. And these are this is optional if you want to get this detailed. We'll go ahead and hit save. So now we have that ports elastic. And then we have some administrative ports we're going to do. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, make a clone of this guy. we we'll just call this admin. And in this case, these are going to be your administrative ports. 22s for SSH, 443, 3389 for remote desktop. And 8443. Oh, that didn't mean to be like that. That should be ports underscore admin. Save. We'll make another one. This one's going to be for Greenbone Vulnerability Management. The Vulnerability Scanner. Uh, vulnerability Scanner. And this is We're going to create one for mail servers. I'm just doing this because this was covered in there in the uh, original instructions. I don't, throughout deploying this whole thing, I did not run into anything that required any mail port servers. However, if you set up, if you set up other services within your environment that may have mail services, then this will be already set up for you. You'll, you'll have it already set up. That's something I'll be experimenting with later on sometime. Standard mail ports. And 
and some others. We'll get some web ports in there. and we'll have some specific to the OpenCTI application. That's another thing I believe it doesn't like. It doesn't like capital letters. Excuse me, not 8443, This is also for a uh, portainer on the identify node. Save. Now we've got all these guys built. We'll go ahead and apply. Those are your ports ones. We're still not done in this section here. Now we're going to create some for networks. First one we're going to do. This is done slightly different in the original instructions just because of the version of OpenSense that I'm actually using. There's certain categories that there's a there's a um, a field that is not available here. So I found a different way to do this specific one, the RFC 1918, the private uh, networks. So we're going to go ahead and sec say these are networks. And the networks we're going to describe the 192.168 block, the 10 block, the 127, basically your local host block, 172.16, and your carrier grade net. Because there are a lot of things that might we there are going to be some rules that are set up to block things and block access to those. We'll have one for secure server network. This is basically your LAN. Where is this guy? Copy that. We'll call this one SSN for secure server network. And it's the one I two one sixty eight thirty. This is where if I would have kept it at two twenty, this is what network I would have put there. Now, here are some that I actually created myself. I would recommend you do these too, but it's up to you. you there's not required. I'm going to create one, some, uh, some for hosts. Detect underscore servers. Now, in building this according to the instructions, you're only going to have one detect server. You're only going to have one to identify and one respond. But if you decide to find some way, play around, and maybe even have a cluster or several different ones that fulfill the same role, you might want to create a uh, uh, an alias that encompasses all of those. 
and I'm going to go ahead and 192.168.30.5. I'll just go ahead and put the IP address. Oh, that's not going to go there. We'll put the IP address directly in here. And I'll just say detect servers. Go ahead and do the same thing for respond and identify. Respond is dot three. Because actually this is what I use when I do the firewall rules that are authorizing or blocking traffic to these nodes, I make sure I just point it at these aliases instead of trying to put the individuals in there. So respond servers, and then we'll go ahead and do identify servers. This is dot seven. And we're done with the aliases. Next step, let's build some rules that utilize these aliases. It's not in the same area, firewall, we're going to go to rules. And we're going to go to the LAN interface, which is our management. In the, it gets a little complicated here with the original instructions because of the site, the micro segmentation. But here, because you have, there's basically what amounts to an individual interface per sub, per virtual IP. And therefore, you have a lot more interfaces listed here than what I have. What I'm doing, since I have all of them in the same network, I'm just using the management here and all the rules that are specific to the identify server, the, the, defect, the detect server, and the response server, they're all going to be a... Um, made for the SOC management. And to show you what I'm doing here, what we're going to do is this entire, we're going to create these rules here for the LAN itself. So uh, some of them are for detect, some for identify. We're going to create all of these in this order as well. So let's get to here. And as a matter of fact, since I have an internet connection, one of the things I'm going to do, this is going to be a neat trick for me because this makes it a little easier. Uh, we'll go to Google and we will go to, I want to go let's see if this works. Let's see if it finds my page. It does. So I found something. There it is. So now this should allow me to copy paste. Since it's on here, I can't copy anything directly from my workstation to this virtual machine. But now that I'm on that virtual machine, I should be able to do a lot of copy paste. Okay. So coming back here to the rules, we're on the sock management. We're going to create our first rule. And that's going to pass, uh, it's going to basically pass everything. So we're going to pass interface to SOC management, protocol, the directions inbound, 
protocol. Uh, I want to say this says any. Oh, right here. Protocol any. And I do want to make sure of one thing. It is IPv4 specifically. So any protocol, any source, any source port, and we're going to go destination is this firewall. Destination port, any, and we're just going to take all this. Instead of me having to type a lot, that's going to be the description. Allow any to this firewall. Category doesn't matter. And we can hit save. So now we have our rule right here. As a matter of fact, the interesting thing about the way this movement around is, I mark this and then I go to the one that I want it to go above and I hit this arrow. And now that shoots it up above that. That's just to let you know that now. I'm just going to create a bunch of these and I'm going to go ahead and just move them all at once. But now we have this rule. Next rule we're going to do, we actually just copy just to do that. In this case, the protocol is going to be TCP. Any source, any source port, destination is going to be SSN. So now I can type these in because they're aliases. And it recognizes those aliases. And specifically which ports. It's going to be, uh, in this case, I believe this is admin. Yeah, ports admin. So I just type any part of this, the, li the label of the um, alias. And this one specifically is allowing management. Save that. We're going to clone that. Uh, this next one is TCP, and it's going to be the source is going to be OpNet. So our source is literally going to be our SOC OpNet network because I want this is talking about our, our SOC analyst workstations. I want them to be able to access the identify servers on with the OpenCTI ports. Actually, I missed one. Elastic traffic. We'll get that in there. Oh, that's what it was. The previous one. The one for secure server. No, not this. Not OpenCTI. Stock OpNet. Detect servers. Okay, so I kind of missed. So SOC OpNet to identify. That actually is wrong. We will edit this. It's not SOC OpNet to identify as anything. Any. To, to um, identify. Yep. The SOC OpNet is the port elastic ports. So we're going to go ahead and allow source is SOC OpNet network. And then this is going to be elastic ports. So as you can see, we're building out our rule listing. 
uh, we'll have a, a rule specific to um, let's see add a new one this is going to be the only one and it's going to be on multi we'll have it on several ones it's the only one that's going to do a block interface is going to be this interface protocol will be any source will be any source port will be any destination RFC 1918 so those privates and the carrier grade net destination port any and this is where we're blocking this We'll have, I believe we already have a default rule, a pass allowing any, any. Yep, default allow any and IPv6 are here. And then there's a redirect, a redirect rule, which is a pass on this interface is specifically TCP. It is specifically the LAN address is the source. So in this case, our management address is the source. Source port any. And then destination is How did I actually do this? Because I had a destination of that. I may have to create an alias for it. Because this is a, re a proxy redirect. We'll do a cancel right quick. We'll apply these for the moment so that I don't lose them. I will go back up to aliases. I'll create a host alias because I'm not exactly sure how I did this the last time. This is one of the things when I was creating like the RFC 1918, we had to play around with it to figure out exactly what works. I'll just call it local, local host, and it is that. So I'll just call it local host. It's not a host, it's a network because of the CIDR. We'll apply it. And then we'll go over here to rules for the net, the local, for the LAN. And we will create that rule. And it is TCP LAN address, so management not net, not its management address. 
to localhost and specifically port 3128. Once again, I'm gonna have to create a re uh, well, I'll just say any right now, I'll just create this and then I'll come back and change it. We'll just call it a redirect for proxy. I'll have to create that port. I'll just call it proxy port. Save it. We'll apply changes. Come back to the alias. We'll create a new alias, which is a port. And it's 3128. Come back to the rules for management. And we're going to edit this guy. And this time it will be proxy redirect save so those are all the rules and now we're going to put these in order the very first one is this firewall the next one should be the secure server network uh, the ports admin one then allow elastic so allow elastic i will move that before the open cti then comes open cti then comes the block for RFC 1918. So that should be right after OpenCTI. So that's here. And then you have your allow LAN, allow LAN IPv6, and then the traffic redirect. So this is the order we want. And we'll hit apply changes. Now we're done with the rules for the SOC management. This is the one that had the most, the largest list of rules. If we look at opnet there's literally one rule one or two there's two rules there so we'll go to that i'm gonna actually go ahead and copy this guy so i have it on my clipboard so now we're going to opnet first one is going to be None of these are blocking. These are going to be a TCP allow or pass any source, any any source loca uh, IP, any source port to the LAN address. So in this case, it's going to be the management address port 8443. That 8443 is an admin. So, oh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong thing. Port range. Ports admin, yes. And we'll hit save. And then ICMP, the next one I do, it allows for ICMP. So we'll go ICMP here, any ICMP type, any source to the LAN net. So this is the network now for the management for diagnostics. And we'll go ahead and apply changes. And we're done with the opnet. So now the next part, we're going to be doing DMZ. Now with the DMZ, is going to be a little different. 
because you're going to have rules and also considering if we look at our map the DMZ is where you're going to receive traffic or yeah, receive host data and network data if set up properly from your defended network so there's going to be any support forwarding that's going to actually be needing to be done on this interface and with that configuration you'll create or have rules generated as well but that's one of the things we have to keep in mind here so the first thing we're going to do is go from here on the firewall we're going to go to NAT and we're going to do port forward we're going to hit the plus over here and we're going to ensure that the DMZ is the interface that is connected or that is selected TCP IP version oh, excuse me so the way this works is if you select as soon as you collect select it it'll add it to a list so the only one that we want is the DMZ so we're not going to have the WAN. We're not going to have anything else. We just want the DMZ. So when I click away, all I should have is stock DMZ. So TCP IV version, IP version is 4. We're doing TCP. And then from the from source port, we're going to go advanced here. So source, make sure we're doing this here. TCP source is any and then the source port range we're going to select other and actually that's what I need to do when I go back I'm gonna go back to some of those rules and do stuff uh, to change them but I'm gonna type in other because this allows us to do a manual entry and what we're going to do is 9200 on both of these. And then the destination is going to be the SOC DMZ address. And it's going to be destination is going to be destination port range once again we're going to do other and it's the same port 9200 and then the redirect is going to be a single hoster network and we're literally going to put in let's see yeah, we'll put in the IP address of our detect node. So that would be 192.168.30.5 or whatever you set yours to be. And the directed target port is literally going to be... Oh, wait, this is the port. Excuse me. 9200. The host is going to be that. And we're going to make sure this says add associated filter rule. And now the interesting thing is, well, what do we do to apply this? There it is. Didn't scroll down far enough. Click save. And we'll apply changes up here. And now if I go over to firewall rules and I look at the SOC DMZ, I see a rule right here that allows that traffic in. Now, one of the things I want to do, I want to go back to my uh, rules for the SOC management and specifically, let's talk about this redirect. I'm going to edit this. So, we had the destination. Okay, there's no other on that. So, that's the only thing I could do there was localhost. But for here, I didn't have to create a alias. So, I'm just going to go other. 
and that will literally say port 3128 although the way I did it will work too but I want this stuff to be consistent so I can go ahead and hit save and apply changes because then I can see the port number right there and I'll just go over to alias I don't need it I'll just get rid of it this garbage that guy actually this is it right there right nope this one yes apply And the same thing can be said on the opnet. Uh, rules. We're going to opnet. I put too many ports. I use that. This has multiple ports in it, and I don't need to do that. All I want is 8443. So we'll just go other. And this is going to be 8443. Save and apply. Okay, so now we got the rules set up for the OpNet network interface, the LAN interface, the DMZ port forwarding is set up. We are done with the firewall. So let's take a look at how it looks. We'll hit our dashboard right quick. So we have Our IP address is here. Uh, our LAN IP address sitting right there. This is the one that the OpNet, and th then we have an OpNet here. This is the one that our analyst workstations will be uh, talking to. DHCP is set up on the WAN. There are no rules set up on the WAN. We take a look at our rules themselves. Actually, that's interfaces. Uh, firewall. Now let's take a look at our rules. Uh, we'll go to the management first, which is our LAN. These are all of our rules that we have set up. We have one blocking rule, the rest of them are passing. We have our OpNet, literally only has two rules here. This is allowing for troubleshooting from your uh, OpNet. And then this one allows for uh, access to the firewall for management. And actually, I believe there should be more in there, but we will see. Oh, the management rules actually have the ones that allow for access to the services and whatnot from the OpNet. And DMZ, I set up port forwarding rules so that when we set up agents on the outside and on our protected network that data can come in and be redirected to the uh, sim when it stood up so that's the firewall in a nutshell join me on the next video the next video we're going to be setting up the detect node this is going to be the elastic sim uh, this is what all the agents are going to be talking to all of our different nodes in our environment are going to be sending their logs to it so this uh, this is our centralized management portion uh, our centralized management node um, hopefully I will see you on that next video